Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, we start with an interview between Deb Goodrich and Ben Costello. Then we have a look at a story that discusses the differences between horns and antlers. Then Deb Goodrich and Becky Burgoyne will discuss her writing about gun smoke. And we'll have a poem from Ron Wilson and end with a look at the painter Zach Barnes. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Welcome to Kansas. Welcome, folks. I'm just thrilled to have Ben Costello with me, and it's so funny because. Ben and I have been friends for a long time. I interviewed him over the radio years ago, and then, of course, we've been Facebook friends. And now to meet you in person is just About awesome. time, it's huh? It's about there time, are. that's right. So you grew up watching Gunsmoke, and how did you turn from just an or ordinary fan into an author? Well, I had written a couple of plays, but as a kid, we watched it as a family. It was one of the shows that we would sit down religiously and watch. And I was at a... Um, memorabilia show in Hollywood and I was buying photos and memorabilia and a guy says you know the 50th anniversary is coming up why don't you write a book on it and I started thinking about it I said alright can't be that tough <laughs> then when I realized there were 635 episodes <laughs> to cover I knew I'd taken on a big project but it took me five years oh, to get it done. Well it's a tremendous amount of research well, thank you. but it's more than just you know cataloging who and what it really captures uh, just like you were talking about the family sitting around the TV watching it yeah. that's the legacy of Gunsmoke. Well you know it, it was one of the first adult westerns on TV and it was so popular that at one point there were 36 different westerns on television and there were only three networks at the time you know the kids today there's two or three hundred channels right. they wouldn't have a you know clue that we only had three back then and then a couple of local stations you know but sure. but it's america's mythology you know the west and um, gunsmoke had the benefit of having the best talent in front of the camera and behind it also. The writers, the directors, the producers. The writers were amazing. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Jim Burns was one of the best writers. He, he did the introduction for my book. And, uh, uh, they, and Sam Peckinpah, who was a legendary director, started out as a writer with Gunsmoke and The Rifleman and a couple other shows. So they had the best of the best. They absolutely did. And I was telling somebody today, you know, to. Um, Kansas could not have had a better ambassador to the world than this show. Right, than Marshall Matt Dillon. Marshall you know, Matt Dillon. And, and if you look at the show, it really started iconic portrayals. Because you, you see someone like Doc in other shows, other movies. You'd see a Miss Kitty type of person. And of course, you'd see the big lawman. But it all started really with gun smoke. You know. So, what has getting involved in this meant to you personally in your life? Well, it changed my life for the better. Uh, a lot of the people that I interviewed are still my friends today, 10, 12, 15 years later. Um, and some of the meanest, rottenest people on screen are the biggest cupcakes you'd ever want to meet. You know, teddy bears like Morgan Woodward. Scared the heck out of me as a kid. But meeting him, he's just the nicest guy in the world and he to this day still calls my son every once in a while check on him how are you doing Eddie you know you don't hear that with stars and stuff like that today and we don't really have the stable of actors that they had back then the good character actors yeah. we don't have them you know it was it was a magical era and everything clicked everything hit right at the right time absolutely yeah. And it's uh, the only other show other than I Love Lucy that's never left the air since its premiere. 
amazing. It's, it's unbelievable. Amazing. And 20 seasons, unbelievable. Well, Ben, thanks so much. Thank you. It was you, great ben. to visit with you. You gotta have the book. Thank Stay you. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. Nevermore do you walk the earth, his spirit rides here still. Roman knows the wild wind blows, Roman knows. No one knows if we'll see your lights again. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. Hey, can you see that big longhorn? on the wall above my shoulder. That was donated to the Fort Wallace Museum by Carl and Wanda Urich. That's pretty impressive. And you know those longhorns have been used for hat racks, put on the fronts of Cadillacs, just all kinds of things. Just like antlers, they're uh, put together for chairs, like there's one, uh, I think over in North Platte for, uh, in Bill Cody's home, got that great antler chair. Just all kinds of cool stuff that can be made with antlers horns, powder horns, you know, blowing the horn, just all kinds of uses. Of course, the animals had pretty big use for them from the beginning. I started looking into the difference because Dr. Jake was busy and didn't have time to explain it to me, so I resorted to the internet, folks, and I found a really cool article by Kara Koblicek on mental floss in addition to tons of other stuff, National Park Service, and I kind of combined those and put them into this story for you so that you'll know the difference between antlers, horns, and tusks. Have you ever wondered what the difference is between horns and antlers? Well, let's talk about it a little. Well, antlers are possessions of deer. All deer have antlers. And for the most part, just males have antlers. Now there are exceptions to that, being reindeer and caribou, that the females do. Antlers do vary a little bit in their size and the shape, and depending on what type of deer possesses those antlers. One species of deer, the white-tailed deer, is indigenous all across the United States, so this type of antler is very familiar to most people. Now a different type of antler is a fallow deer. Now the fallow deer have a palmated antler, and they get the word palmated because it looks like the palm of our hand. It has a broad flat piece with little appendages coming off of it. Now every year, deer lose their antlers and grow a whole new set. Horns are totally different. An animal is born with little bitty nubs that develop into these long horns, but they stay with the animal the entire life. The horn has a bone core that is part of the skull and is attached to the skull. And on the outside, there is a keratin sheath. And the keratin is the same thing that our hair and fingernails is made out of. Antlers are made out of calcium, the same as our bones. Now, just like deer, it depends on the type of species that it is as to what their horns look like. And horns can look very different Another thing that varies between species is whether or not the females have horns, and that varies greatly. One good way to cheat if you're visiting the wildlife ranch is to refer to our guidebook. For every animal, we also make note if the horns are possessed in just the males or in males and females. I did bombard you with a lot of information, so just to recap quickly, Antlers are possessed mainly by males, except for reindeer and caribou. They're also made out of the same thing that our bones are made out of, and are grown and lost every single year. Horns, on the other hand, can be possessed by males or females, or sometimes just males, and are made out of the same thing our hair and fingernails are made out of, and they keep them their entire life. 
I hope this helped you distinguish a little bit more about the difference between antlers and horns. We look forward to seeing you on your next African Safari Texas style at Natural Bridge Wildlife Ranch. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. I'm Scott Thelman, and this is Juniper Hill Farms. Even though my parents weren't farmers, they bought this beautiful farm north of Lawrence in 1999. In 2010, I started growing vegetables on this land. Today, Juniper Hill Farms sells produce to wholesalers, grocers, and restaurants, and is focused on growing high-quality food that everyone can afford. Watch my story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer. The land here tells a story. It offers up fossils of extinct beasts, ruins of native villages, farmsteads and battlegrounds. Walk the shore of historic Scott Lake and imagine the native peoples on the hillsides above you. Listen, you can hear their voices on the wind. Discover the secrets of Scott County on the ground where history happened or in the comfort of the El Cuartalejo Museum and the Jerry Thomas Gallery. I promise you'll find an amazing story. Tarwater Farm and Home is a 40-year-old local family-owned business. Clothing for work and play, seeds and feeds, boots, toys for the kids, and tools you'll need for around the house and farm. And a service department to keep them in top running order. It's a big store, so take some time to see what they have for your farm and home. Tarwater's everyday pricing is like others' sale prices. When you need it, they've got it. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. Welcome folks. We're visiting with Becky Burgoyne, who is the biographer of Amanda Blake. And of course, all you Gunsmoke fans know her as Miss Kitty. So Becky, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here and in Dodge City. In Kansas. Dodge City. Isn't this great? Oh, this For is a Gunsmoke fan, it doesn't get any better. So how did you become interested in, obviously there are a lot of fans that don't go as far as writing a biography. Yes, um, I've loved her since I was about 11 or 12 and always followed Gunsmoke. And then when she suddenly passed away, I, I woke up one morning and said, hmm, I need to write her story. I, I just, it just came out of the blue. And then I called, I knew her manager. Mm -hmm. And after I called, I said, I would like to write her story. She said, don't worry. A couple of people are going to do that. So I waited about 15, 20 years, and no one ever did. And it came to me one time, I should try to do it. So right. so you always follow your heart. You yep. always follow that dream, no matter how strange it is. Yep. So uh, a, you know, a school teacher from Covington, Indiana, in the middle of both coasts, in the middle of the country, um, I had to fly east coast, west coast, to gather all the information on Amanda. It took three years of research and we've made some wonderful friends along the way. And it's just been a dream come true. So tell me what's the most remarkable thing about Amanda Blake? The most remarkable thing about Amanda Blake is she was honest, she was honest to herself, she was feisty, um, and what you saw was what you got. She never thought herself to be the star, even though she was. And she greeted everyone um, warmly, she had that wonderful, loving spirit of the Gunsmoke family. We mm -hmm. find with those that are still alive right. from the Gunsmoke family. Right. You know, Miss Kitty was a businesswoman. She was unique in women on TV at the time. She was, and I find that fascinating. I, I mean, she was independent, you know. Matt Dillon and her couldn't get married because it would ruin the whole right. plot of the Dynamic, show. So yeah. The dynamics would be gone and they couldn't have Matt Dillon's woman 
be just a woman for everybody working sure. working in the saloon. So they had to become a businesswoman. And Amanda liked that. She said Kitty was a lot stronger than her in reality. They, she wasn't. But, but um, she really loved being that first businesswoman to look up to. And a friend of Amanda's once asked her, um, there's a couple years before she passed away, she said, okay, so just what was it that you liked about being on Gunsmoke for, for 20 years? And she says, are you kidding, honey? I was queen of the long branch. Just like that. And she was. She was their queen. Wow. Something we all aspire to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, she she did it, and she did it beautifully. And Yeah, so thanks for joining us. All right, thank you, and thanks for having me. I love it here in Dodge City, Kansas. We love having you. Thank you. Stay tuned. Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center. Right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70 after all is America's Main Street and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day and I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me. You know, the guys who are talking about the big elf they just bagged or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me. And they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulders sure hurt. I kept waiting, and it, it didn't get better, and so I went to an orthopedic surgeon, and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. He said, well, I have to do surgery. I, I farm and ranch by myself. It's not going to work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. And gotten down there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by 11.30, the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes, and then injected it in my shoulders, and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try, and, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas Farmers. When I went to the county fair recently, and then again when I go to the state fair, one of the first things that strikes me when I go to the livestock barns is all the noise. This poem is entitled, Sounds Fair. As I arrived at the fairgrounds, the first thing that struck me was the variety of sounds I heard in broad cacophony. The bucket calves were bawling, horses neighing head to tail. In the back, the geese were honking, hogs were grunting by the scale. In the pens, the lambs were baying, and the goats were loudly bleeding, while people exchanged smiles and called out a happy greeting. A diesel pickup chugged up to discharge its trailer load, while a maintenance man putted by in a gator on the road. There were cries of mom and dad, as families made their way, to put their carefully prepared 4-H exhibits on display. It is project check-in time, as the fair is just beginning. The voices of 4-H'ers show their excited hopes of winning. It is an amazing collection of sounds that I hear at the fair, as the 4-H'ers annual projects all appear. Now the roar seems to subside, and there's a lowering of the din as the entries are checked off and the livestock settle in. Our county agent has been hustling all around the grounds. Now he stops to take a breath as the flurry settles down. So what do you hear, I ask as he drops into a chair. Well, he replied, it sounds like a county fair. Happy trails.
Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. As fourth-generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. With nearly 100 years of broadcasting excellence, Wren Radio is now live on the internet playing hit songs of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Join Jack Diamond, Matt Collins, Les Glenn, Frankie C., Antonio Barber, Wings Callahan, and the real Don Steele for some of the best music ever recorded. Hear it at wrendigitalmedia.com or get the Wren Oldies Radio app in Play Store or App Store. And tell Alexa, good times and great oldies on Wren Internet Radio. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Videographer Michael Gehring and I had just stopped in Cottonwood Falls to visit the Chamber Office and the Symphony and the Flint Hills Office and Gallery. They were in the midst of a plein air exhibit and some of the artists were still in the field. We found Zach Barnes in the front yard at Pioneer Bluffs the restored territorial homestead at Matfield Green. A more picturesque setting could not be imagined. The farmhouse, imposing barns, large trees, stone walls, and the artist at work in the midst of the scene. Zach paused only moments from his work, a painting of a vintage tractor. He would have shaken hands, but his hands were splattered with paint, and he had little time to leave the canvas. He worked quickly, with bold, thick strokes of color, it was a piece of art in itself just to watch Zach create. The work of this Kansas native has proven to be popular at exhibits and galleries throughout the region. I feel a deep connection to the prairie landscape and to the people of this land. These are the base and anchor of my work, Zach has said. They set the emotional tone for any narrative that plays itself out in the paintings. My strongest influences are my immediate environment, life experience, and the way my mind interprets this information. Zach lives alternately between remote and cosmopolitan settings, which allows him to explore a wide range of experiences. The landscape work is challenging, constantly changing. Zach explained, I attempt to capture the fleeting moment in paint, texture, and color, in mood and measure. The scene changes with each passing moment, demanding a concentration of attention and quickness of hand. I paint with brush and palette knife, often limiting the palette, using earth tones to accentuate moments of color. With an artist's skill and insight, those moments are forever captured on canvas. Gary Blitch, owner of Southwind Gallery, said, Zach Barnes is one of the most innovative artists to come into the Kansas art scene in the last 10 years. He conveys interesting otherness in a style which almost requires the viewer to spend more time in front of the canvases than you had planned. You will see beautiful women packing six-shooters, 18-wheelers where they don't belong, and St. Bernard's everywhere. If you had any money, I would recommend you invest in Zach Barnes. I think it would be a blue-chip deal. 
Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together Let we grow. You Learn more, more at eggpromosource.com. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.